I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will kind of give introduction to complex numbers with a very interesting example. The question here is find two numbers whose sum is 6 and product is 25. So let us say the two numbers are x and y then x plus y is 6 and uh, product x times y is 25. We have to find these two numbers. We can write one number in terms of the other. We can say y equals to 6 minus x. Substitute this in the second equation. I'm not numbering the equations here, but substitute y equals to 6 minus x in this equation. And then find x. So we'll, we can write this as x times y is 6 minus x equals to 25. Okay? So first, from the given question, we found two equations. Find numbers whose sum is 6. So this, let me call this as equation 1. And here, product is 25, equation number 2. Isolate y, substitute in equation 2. So we'll call this equation 3. So what we do here now is sub 3 into. So we get this equation, x times 6 minus x equals to 25. There's just one variable. We should be in a position to solve this. Multiply 6x minus x squared equals to 25. We can take all these terms to the right side. So we get x squared minus 6x plus 25. Now, uh, we can complete the squares and then solve such an equation. You can also use quadratic formula, but let me complete the square and then solve. To complete squares, what should we do? We'll add and subtract square of half of 6, which is 3, right? So we'll add and subtract 3 square. This is completing the squares method. We could have used quadratic formula also to find the solution. Now here, this could be written as x minus 3, right? Whole square. Since first three terms form a perfect square, then we have minus 9 plus 25. And that gives us x minus 3 whole square minus 9 plus 25 is plus 16, right? So that's what we get 0 equals to this. Now to solve for x, we'll take 16 on the left side. All this is 0, right? So we get minus 16 equals to x minus 3 whole square. Now at this stage earlier, we kind of stopped since we know in set of real numbers square is always positive never negative right square is always positive right and so we said no solution so when we were talking about real numbers we said no solution correct so that is the place where we stopped and uh, kind of gave up. Now let's continue from here and try to find a solution and see whether our conditions are met or not. So we'll again continue from here. What we're writing is we are saying x minus 3 whole square equals to minus 16. Okay. Now let me continue with minus 16. What do I get? I get x minus 3 equals to square root of minus 16. And whenever you do square root, you get plus and minus. And then we can say x is equals to 3 plus and minus square root of minus 16. So that is what we get. Now we are saying that the solution of the question which we began with that is sum is 6 and product is 25 is kind of like this so that means we got two numbers here one is 3 plus square root of minus 16 and the other one is 3 minus square root of minus 16 correct now in the set of real numbers this does not make sense but let us see what happens if we add these two okay let me add these two if i add 3 plus square root of minus 16 plus 3 minus square root of minus 16. What do I get? Now these two terms cancel out, right? So these two terms 
with plus and minus cancel out and what you really get is equal to 3 plus 3 over just 6 right so we did get sum of 6 do you see that sum of 6 correct now let me multiply these numbers let me multiply these numbers and see what do I get so now we have 3 plus square root of minus 16 times 3 minus square root of minus 16 so when I multiply I get 3 times 3 as 9 and then I get minus 3 square root of minus 16 and then with this I get plus 3 times square root of minus 16 and when I multiply this part kind of I get square root of minus 16 square right so this is kind of tricky but what we really get here is that these two cancel out right and he here we get 9 minus now square of minus 16 I mean because assuming that we could write this as as 16 right So assuming square root of this number, we could write it as such. Uh, what I'm trying to say is, if we could write this as minus 16, then we do get 25. Do you see that? I'm not saying this is the correct step, but what I'm trying to say here is that we could get 25 if somehow we could have written this number as this. Right? I mean to say square of this number as negative 16. Right? Then we could have got that result also right so that gives kind of an idea that uh, this result which uh, we got was not really absurd right it could make sense if we could extend our number system right so so what logically mathematicians did that they extended the mathematical set of numbers to include another number so that we could also solve equations where we have negative within the square root right and then they said well let us say that uh, square root of minus one is is some imaginary number that is what i is imaginary number in that case square of this imaginary number will be minus one right so that is kind of introduction of imaginary number which was given the sign i for imaginary we call it when we say iota we call it iota right a greek symbol iota right so that will be the symbol being used so now in this set of complex numbers so this is imaginary this so this set was called set of complex numbers okay so now in the set of complex numbers we have all the real numbers plus such numbers which have square root of minus one also included now taking the set of complex numbers we could actually provide the solution for this one right so this now all of a sudden has a lot of meaning we could write x as equals to 3 plus or minus so we are saying square root of minus 1 is i right so we say i and what is square root of 16 it is 4 right so it is it is 4 so we could write this as real and complex part so in this case it's good to normally write this as uh, x plus minus 4i so we say we have two solutions here one is x plus 4i the other one is x oh, i mean 3 plus 4i the other one is 3 minus 4i where i is the imaginary part and i square is equals to minus 1 right so that is kind of a introduction to complex numbers so it helps us to further simplify or get solutions to equations where in quadratic formula you found uh, b square minus 4ac when it is less than 0 that means it is negative 
we could solve those equations right so we say now we may not have real roots but we may have imaginary roots right so we have imaginary roots uh, for such situations so that is how we get introduced to complex numbers we'll further explore how to find solutions to many situations where iota this introduction of i square equals to minus 1 or square root of minus 1 equals to i helps us to understand mathematics and some real life situations far better i'm anil kumar and i hope that helps thank you and all the best